How much home can you afford to purchase with a $100,000 salary putting absolutely no money down using a VA loan? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna dive into in today's video. We're gonna do some basic calculations, not only to show you how to calculate your income using VA, but also how to determine how much home you can actually afford. Now, for those of you wondering why I'm talking about a VA loan specifically, it's because you guys are the ones asking about VA, asking me to do this video. I've done it before using FHA, I've done it doing conventional, but I haven't really done it in detail talking about a VA loan. And VA is really the most flexible loan when it comes to qualifying for a home. I often say FHA is the most flexible. And the reason I say FHA is because anyone can use an FHA loan. Even a veteran can use an FHA loan. But when it comes to VA, the only people that can use a VA loan are those that actually qualify, meaning that you had to be a veteran or a spouse of a veteran of someone that's actually served in the military. Now, there are some additional qualifications that I'm not going to dive into in today's video. Today's video is really about figuring out how much home you can afford if you make $100,000 per year. But before we dive into that, I'd like to take a minute and ask a favor. If you find any value in my videos at all, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up. And if you want to stay updated on mortgage and real estate related content, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Now, when talking about VA, it's very, very, very important to understand that there are a lot of companies out there when you search Google that say they are for veteran companies, that they have the veterans best interest in mind. When in fact, a lot of these companies not only overcharge on their fees, but also charge higher rates than other lenders out there. In addition to that, they often have overlays on their programs, which means they're not necessarily going by the VA's guidelines. They're putting guidelines on top of those guidelines, which means they can tell you, hey, you don't qualify for a VA loan. And that's only because they're using their guidelines and not the actual veterans affairs. So instead of Googling VA lenders, rather work with a trusted professional and someone that not only understands the VA guidelines, but also has your best interest in mind. Now I realize that can sound very self-serving for someone doing a video like this, but understand there's a lot of people out there that don't understand some of the basics that we're going to talk about in today's video, like residual income and how that can actually affect your ability to qualify. So just make sure you're working with a professional, whether that's a friend, a family, member, somebody that was referred to you, or maybe in some cases you have no idea where to start. Well, if you'd like to work with my team and I, someone that actually understands the guidelines, as well as having your best interest in mind, do us a favor and check that link in the description below. Now, when it comes to qualifying for a mortgage, how a lender determines how much home you can afford is typically based on your debt to income ratio. Now, your debt to income ratio is affected by a couple of different factors. One of the main factors out there is where interest rates are at that time. As interest rates go higher, you're going to be able to qualify for less home. As mortgage rates come down, not only is that going to improve housing affordability, but it's also going to translate into you being able to purchase more homes. So in today's video, understand I'm using a mortgage rate of 6.75% for a VA 30-year fixed loan. And the reason I'm doing that is because that's where interest rates are today, but also understand that rate can change not only weekly, but sometimes daily. So while I am going to show you how to do these calculations, just make sure you know that these videos are for novelty purposes only. You should be working with a professional, someone that understands the business so that you know you're fully approved before you go out there shopping for a home. And now taking us back to debt to income ratio, what the lender is going to use in order to determine how much home you can afford, I think it's important to understand what debt to income ratio actually is. Your debt to income ratio is how much monthly debt you have versus the income that you make. Now, when it comes to FHA loans and conventional loans, the lender is going to use your gross monthly income. That is your income before any taxes come out. And the reason they use your gross monthly income is because people's expenses vary based on their exemptions, how much they pay in their 401k, just so many different factors. So the easiest way for a lender to calculate your debt to income ratio is to use your gross monthly income. And so with FHA, conventional, USDA, what they do is they take your gross monthly income. For example, we're talking about $100,000 today. $100,000 divided by 12, because there's 12 months in a year, would give you a gross monthly income of $8,333. And then you would go off the FHA or conventional's guidelines and they would say, hey, your max debt to income ratio is 45%. Or in the case of FHA, you can go as high as a 57% back end ratio as long as you have a 47% front end ratio. But this is where it gets really, really complicated with 
with VA because VA, they're using a residual income calculation. Now, the main reason the residual income calculation is different is because not only are they taking the debts that show up on your credit report to factor into your debt to income ratio, they're also taking into account your payroll withholdings as well as something called a maintenance and utility factor. Now, if I'm being completely honest in this video, most lenders out there don't even know about residual income, much less how to calculate it. So it's super, super important when you're going through the process of buying home that you not only have a professional on your side, but someone that understands the residual income calculation, because oftentimes if they're just doing a basic debt to income calculation, they can say, hey, listen, you're not approved based on this debt to income ratio, when in fact, you might actually be able to go higher than the normal based on how much residual income you have left. Now, I'm gonna throw a chart here on the screen that shows how much residual income you need based on where you're located in the country. Now, something really, really important to understand is that residual income not only varies by the region where you're located, but it also varies by family size as well as your loan amount. Now, if we were doing a basic VA calculation and we weren't looking at the residual income and we were saying, hey, listen, you could go up to a 50% debt to income ratio using VA. What we would do is we would take that annual salary of $100,000. We would divide it by 12. That would give us $8,333 per month. Then we take 50% of that. So that gives us a number of $4,166. So if VA worked like conventional and FHA, then we would say, hey, the back end ratio max is 50%. So in this case, that's $4,166, which means that your housing expenses plus your monthly debts can't exceed that $4,166 because you have a front end ratio, which is your housing expenses. And then you have a back end ratio, which is your housing expenses plus the other debts that show up on your credit report. Things like your car payment, things like credit cards, things like installment loans. I often say if you had to apply for it to get credit, chances are it's showing up on your credit report. Now, if you're one of those lucky people that don't have any monthly debt, then your front end ratio and your back end ratio are essentially going to be the same. So for purposes of this video, it's very, very difficult to figure out how much home you can afford if you make $100,000 using the residual income calculation because we don't know your payroll withholdings. And quite honestly, we'd be guessing at the maintenance and utility factor. So what I wanna do here is just kinda of tell you basic guidelines, really basic, basic guidelines, and then, if you qualify for that or seeing if you can qualify for more, then you need to talk to a professional. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you wanna work with our team, there's a link in the description below. But let's say, for example, we're just using that basic 50% debt to income ratio using VA. And the reason I say basic is because I've actually had clients qualify with a 67% back end ratio using a VA loan. And it all comes down to that residual income. But let's just put the residual income aside for a second here and just say, hey, your max debt to income ratio with VA is somewhere around 50%, not taking the residual income into account. So where I'd like to start today is with a $500,000 home. A $500,000 home putting zero money down gives you a base loan amount of $500,000. Now when it comes to VA, one thing that you do have is something called a funding fee. It's required on every single VA loan unless you have at least 10% more of disability. Now, if you have 10% more of disability, then your VA funding fee can be waived entirely. But for purposes of this video, we're gonna say that you have the VA funding fee. We're gonna show you how to calculate it as well. But that VA funding fee for the first time use is 2.15%. Now understand, I said for the first use, if you're using your VA loan again for subsequent use, you're using it to buy another home, if you're putting less than 5% down that second time, the VA funding fee is gonna be 3.3%. Now if you have at least 5% down on that second use, that funding fee drops to 1.5%. But again, going back, this is the first time we're using it, so we're gonna say it's 2.15%. So we multiply that by 500,000, which gives us an amount of $10,750. Now we take that, we add it back to that base loan amount of 500,000, which means we're actually financing $510,750. Now earlier in the video, I mentioned we're gonna to use today's interest rate of 6.75% on a VA loan. So. 6.75% means our principal and interest payment is $3,313. Now, on top 
of that principal and interest payment, we're also going to have property taxes. Now, the nationwide average is somewhere around 1.1%, which is what I'm going to use in today's video. Now, if you're located in a state where you have higher property taxes, Texas is one of those states that comes to mind. New York is another state that comes to mind. You need to use the calculation for the area that you're located. In fact, regardless of where you are in the US, you need to use your local property tax rate versus the 1.1%. But the average is 1.1, which means our property taxes are gonna come out to $458 per month. Now, on top of that, you're also going to need property insurance. Now, again, this is another one of those things that varies by state. If you're in Florida, if you're in California, you're gonna pay a little bit more for property insurance than you are in some other states. But on a $500,000 home, you should be paying about $1,200 per year, at least here in the state of California where we're located, which means that's gonna be $100 per month. Now, if we add all of those up between the principal and interest payment, the taxes, the insurance, that gives us a total monthly payment of $3,871. Now, you might be going, well, where's the mortgage insurance? I'm putting zero down. I know there has to be mortgage insurance. Well, one of the nice things about VA loans is there's absolutely no mortgage insurance. Yeah, you have that VA funding fee that I mentioned earlier, but there's absolutely no mortgage insurance and you can finance up to 100%, which is a huge benefit. So in the case of a $500,000 home, your monthly payment would be $3,871 using those figures that I mentioned earlier. Now, if we were able to go to that 50% debt to income ratio that I mentioned, that means you would also be able to have somewhere around $295 in monthly debt, whether it be a car payment, whether it be credit card, student loans, whatever it is, and still be able to qualify for that home without even taking in the residual income calculation. Now, residual income calculation is going to be a little bit different. Let's take a minute here and talk about how it works. So what they do is they take that gross monthly salary that we mentioned earlier, and they deduct the principal interest taxes insurance, association, HOA, anything that's associated with that property, they deduct it out of that amount. And then on top of that, they're going to deduct your debts that we mentioned earlier. Things like car payments, credit cards, installment loans, they're going to take the monthly payment for those amounts and deduct those as well. Now on top of that, they're also gonna to have to factor in that maintenance and utility factor. Now that factor is gonna be based off the size of your house. The larger your home, the more money it is to maintain that home and the more expensive that utility factor is. Now make sure when you're talking to your lender, they actually understand how to do this basic calculation. We're not gonna do it in today's video because we'd be just making up numbers here. But on top of that, they're also going to take out your payroll withholdings, what you pay into social security, what you pay in taxes, all all of that is going to factor in to figure out your residual income. Now, when it comes to residual income, you actually need 20% above that requirement when it comes to actually calculating that residual income. Now, this could all be really, really confusing and you might be going, Jeb, so how much home do I actually qualify for if I make $100,000 per year? The easy answer is you need to make sure you're talking to a professional that can actually use your income and your expenses to determine whether or not you actually qualify. Because if you're someone that has a lot of monthly debts, then chances are your residual income is really going to be affected which is going to limit how much home you can actually purchase. Now, on the flip side, if you're someone that's coming in and you don't have anything expense-wise other than your housing expenses, chances are you're gonna be able to push those numbers higher and ultimately qualify for more home. I hope this video wasn't super, super confusing, but the moral of the story here is just make sure you're working with someone that understands this, can guide you through the process, answer your questions in detail, and really hold your hand to make sure you qualify. But with that said, if you're someone who's thinking about a VA loan, you're wondering about what other qualifications there are when it comes to VA, do me a favor and check out this video here.